lot of the farmers have been, have been, have been trying to find ways to increase margin. You know, and, and so the, the mindset on a niche market is I don't want to have to produce 8,000 pigs to make a living. I want to produce 500 or 1,000 pigs and I want to make a living. And in order to do that, you not only have to have the market price, a little bit better market price, right? That's important, but, but um, the reason for the study is that if we're going to work on margin, you've got to work on cost too. And so the, the, the margin is really important. And so in order to have the ability to, to, to make a living with a smaller number of pigs, you need to increase the, both the income, that's a given, but you also need to be able to produce pigs cheaper. And that's why we did this study. And that's the results. I'm going to show the results. And this is just a subset. And so um, does, this, does these 41 farms mirror what's going to happen on your farm if you do niche pork production? Maybe, maybe not. You'll be within the range somewhere. And as you see, when you get um, Iowa and Midwest producers and you say, go ahead and raise pigs for me, there's, a, there's what a plethora of ways we can raise pigs, especially if there's no, I mean, no real constraints other than you put, then these, a lot of these aren't feeding antibiotics and they're trying to farrow in pens. And so when we find all kinds of different systems out there, we also, it's no surprise that we find a pretty wide variance in cost of production as well. And what we want to do is dissect these numbers and kind of understand what I call them as the profit drivers. What are really important, what are the really important things in a small herd that's trying to make a living without like I said, eight, 10,000 pigs that you need today in order to make a living. The first instinct, and it's always the first instinct in their industry, it says all you gotta do is produce a lot of pigs, pigs per sow per year, all you gotta do is be efficient and, and you'll make it. You know, and that's just, that's just so widespread in the industry that it's ingrained. And, and what I wanna show you as I go through these numbers is that's not always true. And, and there's more than, in fact, I sorted out the, the profit drivers. There's actually pigs per sow per year is only one of eight different things that are profit drivers in small herds. And so if you're focused, it's actually two, two out of the eight, pigs per litter and litters per sow, makes pigs per sow per year. So two out of the eight. So it's about a quarter of the importance. But there's three other, there's, there's you know, eight things. There's six other things besides pigs per litter and litters per sow that influence profit. And most of those, a few of those are more important than pigs per sow per year, which is a surprise to some people. So let's, let's look at the data, see if I can get this thing to work. There's um, <clears throat> the 41, they weren't all on the same system. In fact, I think there's probably five systems involved. Um, 32 of them were kind of like what, what they term natural, which would mean no antibiotics ever, ever, the ever, ever system. And, and they failed in the pen on deep bedded and they're always outside access kind of thing. That's welfare standards. That'd be the 32. There was five that were organic farms and five that were purebred farms, or four, sorry. And so that was what makes up the, the 42 farms, 41 farms in the study. On organic, what I've done, what, I, what we had to do was we took, the, we didn't put average feed price of organics. I mean, that's skew the feed price. And what we did was take, take their feed efficiency. And so the organic feed cost is not in this data set. We took that out. Just removed the feed from the organic side and gave them just an average price of feed that the rest of them had. And so that way we can compare all, all three systems relatively um, uniformly across. And so there's no $10 corn in, in this data set. It's all the same, same corn price. And in fact, you don't want to say this, in, in 06 it was 219 was the average price for, that these farmers paid for corn in um, 2006. There it is. Um, it, the corn price was standardized in this record. What, what the record amounts to is a cruel analysis of hog operation. So we take opening, closing inventories, we take all the expenses, all the incomes, and, and, and it's a cruel analysis. And we also throw the production numbers in 
to the analysis. And so it's production and the, and the economics analysis, a pretty simple analysis of, of these 41 operations. We, we standardized, whoops, we standardized the um, corn price, we standardized the interest rates, we just assumed an opportunity cost of 5% on all the money. We standardized the labor, and we're saying that we, if we want to do these niche operations, $15 an hour on 2,000 hours is $30,000 a year if you're full-time, and um, that was the labor at that year. We said, you know, we don't want to do it for less than that, too much less than that. <laughs> and then um, the opening closing inventories, we left the same, and so there's no, no paper increase. This is, actual, this is actual production increase. So the values at the beginning and the ending uh, isn't affecting the, 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 um, the outcome on this, on this data set. Any questions about how we set up the, set up the study? These are actual farms. We went out and, and we're collecting their, their actual numbers as we went. First question people might want to know is how big are these farms? And um, I think the average was 67 sows, um, something like that. We've got, if you see on this graph, we've got a th about a third of our sows in the 20 to 40 range. And then we've got another, a big third in here, something between 60 and 100, 60 and 80. And then a, a, about a third of the sows are 100,000 up. And with most of them falling in the 150 range. And so, if I remember, I, I don't remember the average sow herd size, but um, maybe the next slide will show us. That gives you an idea of the kind of diversity and size that we're talking about. We were interested a little bit in, um, you know, is there any economies of scale on niche, niche, in niche herds, and in this data set, they're really, um, as far as economies of scale in the traditional sense, we didn't find any. Um, this is the sow herd size as we, um, that's the red line, as we increase from 10 sows up to over 150 sows, this would be the trend line, the yellow line there is the cost of production and it's bouncing up and down and up and down and up and down. The trend line is flat across there, pretty flat. And what that tells you is that there's no size advantage really on the general shotgun look at this data set of 40, 41 herds is that this, the 10, 20 sow herds are just as competitive as 150 sow herds. And within every size, actually you, you tend to find herds that are, that are highly competitive and herds that are high cost within, a, within, within each within each size group. And so the size question is really, um, except for when we sort by profit, the size pops in. But if we're, well, if we're just taking the whole database and looking at the whole, um, there's real no, no real advantage for small versus, there's no huge, I mean, there wasn't any huge farms in here, except for maybe one, but um, between 20 and 150 sows, um, no, we, we, this data set didn't find any size, size advantage. That said, um, within herd size, this is, a, this, is a plot, this is a graph that I plotted out to say, does, does the number of pigs sold um, stay uniform as the, no, the herd size increases? And the answer to this is no. In fact, the, the, you look at the yellow line and it's up and down and up and down and with some fairly wide extremes as, as the herd size goes from, from down at the bottom, it's on the same scale here, about remember that 10 size, size farm up to about 180, 180 sows on a farm, um, you see the pig numbers. This, this particular farm, um, had 93 sows and sold a, about 1,100 pigs. This particular farm had 105 sows and sold 400 pigs. And so we see pretty good differences in um, output per sow um, as we go, and this slide kind of shows, shows that differences in output. When we're looking, and I talked about the variation earlier, when we're looking at return back to the farm, and, that, and we call that in the economics terms as a return to capital, labor, and management per hundred weight produced. 
we see an extreme range. This is per hundredweight difference. And we see a range from over $20 a hundredweight return to the farm to, to about a break even or negative, where the, at the line, basically, they're just paying cash costs at the zero line. And, and so we're, we're um, seeing a tremendous variation on, on the whole data set. And we broke it out. The way we broke out and studied these is we're looking at um, the 41 herds. And I'm looking at here the average of 15 herds at the top and the average of 15 herds at the bottom. And when I, when I show that graph in numer that I just showed you in numerical form, the average of the top 15 herds um, averaged 17 cents a pound. And that's return over, basically, or return over feed and operating cost, which would be supplies, repairs, all those sort of things. So that's a return. The 17 cents a pound is a return back to your time when we talk about um, capital unpaid labor and management, it's a return back to your time and your building site. So it goes back to the farm, the 17 cents. On the average, is about 10 cents a pound, and the bottom 15 herds is two cents. And so the return per hour here, and if somebody's out there and says, is it worthwhile to get into niche production, if, year, if the year 2006 is a normal, kind of a normal year, we're into abnormal years now with high corn price, but, if, but on a normal year, the average producer made about, that's after paying all the bills and, and paying for something for the buildings, um, the average producer made $13 an hour, you know, with their part-time job with some, with some niche pigs on the farm at home. That, and that's, you know, relative to a job in town, that's probably pretty comparable. If you know, if you got your cost, your financial production costs in line, there's 15 out of those 41 farms that are making $23 an hour, and 15 farms are making three. The next slide here shows um, this one. This one kind of points out um, what I said when size was neutral, but we look at the look at the um, the cost versus um, output versus um, profit on these 15 farms. Whoops, sorry, hit the wrong button. Um, we're producing around 600 pigs, sold about 500 because they're in increasing inventory a bit. Oh, I hit the wrong button again. And um, they made $30,000 selling 500 pigs. These 15 farms made $5,000, a little over $5,000 selling over 1,000 pigs. So those that were producing in this particular data set, those that had their things, their financial, their financials in order, in order with their production, were, were making six times more money with half the number of pigs. So they're working half as hard and making six times more. That's what the data set shows. And that's the kind of extreme we find in, in um, production systems, you know, in this, in this particular data set. I'm going to keep talking about cash costs, and here's the slide that shows you what the cash costs were in the year 2006. Um, feed cost, average 26. Operating cost was about a dime. So the cash cost on the op average operation was a little over 35 cents, 35.79 cash cost. Any price in the year 2006 that went over 35 cents a pound went back to the farm if the billings were paid for. You know, if they're making building payments, the bank takes part of that. Uh, the, top, the top 15 farms had a cash cost of 30 cents, 30 cents a pound, and the bottom 15 farms had a cash cost of 41 cents a pound. And in 19, um, you know, the year 2006, um, the average price was about 49 cents that year for niche pigs, 49 to 50. And so even the, everybody, everybody had some return back to the farm basically in that year. This, this particular slide then adds, adds on to the, the cash cost as the top line. And we add on, this would be at 5% interest on your buildings and your equipment. So things like your tractor, your pickup, um, grinders are all included in these costs. 
Uh, and that would, inc that would add the fixed cost at about three and a half cents to this typical niche operation. There's a lot of old equipment, older facilities involved in this, in, in this kind of um, operations in this data set. And we're, we're saying at $15 an hour, the labor efficiencies worked out to that, uh, that we needed about 13 cents a pound to cover the $15 an hour. And so when that all, when you add that all up together, if we want to get, pay for our cash costs, we want to pay for our buildings, if we want to get $15 an hour, we needed about a 52 cents. That's about what the, what the, um, niche markets needed as far as covering all costs. The, the top 15 needed, um, that's the top 15 profit group. They needed about 46 cents in that year and, uh, and the bottom 15 needed 57. Here's, um, I talked to you earlier, this is the, the reason I bring this slide up next is that, you know, if only we could produce a few more pigs. We would narrow that, that margin. Remember the top 15 farms had what margin? $17 a hundred weight? Remember that? And the bottom 15 were three or two or three, three dollars a hundred weight. If only we could get better productivity out of those low, low profit herds. You know, we think, well, we should be able to make everybody profitable. Well, in this case, I sorted, instead of sorting by profit, on this particular slide, I sorted by pigs per sow per year, and we've got 15 farms that are pretty high relatively. I mean, you're found in a pen, and, and you got some disadvantages, and so it's pretty hard to get 25 pigs per sow per year. It's pretty hard to get 20, because you're lactating in these systems. The other thing that's required is a six-week lactation. And by the time you lactate six weeks, it's pretty hard to get more than two litters out of a sow if everything goes perfectly and you get 100% conception rate. And so a lot of these systems, we're talking about one six litters, one, one six to one eight on the good herds, you know, one two to one four litters per sow on those that, that aren't managing the breeding herd quite as well. But two litters per sow is, is pretty much the mathematical top when you're, when you're lactating seven, six, seven, eight weeks. It just mathematically works out actually 2.1 liters per sow is a max. And when you're farrowing in pens, farrowing all kinds of seasons in old facilities, the litter average is, per, is, is lower than what you might think in some seasons. We have some trouble farrowing in the summer. Some people have some trouble farrowing in the winter. And so um, 14 pigs per sow per year is, is you know, a decent number for some of these systems. but. You know, there are 15 herds that only have seven pigs per sow per year out of the out of the system. So you would think that if we sorted by um, production, that you would think you would see a huge difference in the top 15 farms here that are fit, that are um, 14 pigs per sow per year versus those that are seven, and we don't see it. 14 pigs per sow per year made 12 cents a pound. And um, seven pigs per sow per year made 10. The difference between 12 and 10 is not the difference between 17 and 2. <laughs> when we sort by profit, you follow what I'm saying? So pigs per sow per year is part of it, but um, not, not really all of it. And, and even on this particular data set, if we throw in that we're actually of that difference, they're getting a two, three cent better price high productive herds are getting a better price that actually on the same if I equivalent if I made the price the same on both herds there would be no advantage to produce 14 pigs per sow per year over seven pigs per sow per year um, as far as return back to the farm there's differences in labor when you don't have any pigs and, you're, and labor efficiencies but remember this this particular data set um, I'm talking about return back to your labor, so, so the labor efficiencies weren't sorted out on this slide. You follow what I'm saying? Why is that? And so I dug down, I drilled down into the data, and, and I'm, I'm hoping to paint a picture why we find um, low productivity herds can be sometimes economical, and just because you have more pigs per litter or more pigs per sow doesn't necessarily guarantee um, that you're going to be a profitable um, organization or operation. These over here on the left is the economic rank of these farms, one through ten. And here are the productivities. 
And anything that's highlighted in pink on your screen is high productivity hertz. And so if we look at the top 25%, that'd be 10 out of 40, 10 out of 41 farms, the top 21% um, in economic rank, we only have four, four out of 10 were the top performance hertz. In fact, if you're looking at the fifth ranked economic herd had six pigs per sow per year. Fifth out of 40. Let's look at the next set. These are economic ranks from 10 to 20. And we had out of those 10 herds, we had um, three herds that were top performance herds out of those 10. This would be the top half of the economics. And so out of the top half of the economics, we've only got six herds that are top performance herds out of 20 on the top half of economics. Let's look at the bottom half of the economics. And these are the, these are the um, next 10, and we've got one herd that's a top performance herd there. And the final, we got, we got three herds down here, one up, counting the... Um, 12.4 pigs per sow per year. We've got, and then there's here's one that's 10, here's one that's 11. We've got three or four herds in the bottom economic tier that are top performers in this particular data set. And then um, over the years, this is, this is true, but not to this degree, even in a commodity herds. And in fact, if I, if I um, and what we've done over the years is, is we've, we've looked at performance and assumed that's my maximum profit and then we've had bean counters, and they've been totally separate. And what you need in your economic system, especially if you're a small farm, is to merge the two. You need the financial and, and the product performance data integrated, or somebody that knows how to integrate performance and, and financial data. You can't have the bean counters that don't know anything about pigs off by themselves saying, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. And you can't have performance people looking at, you know, maximizing pigs per sow without any, without any regard to cost, just, just, just assuming that more pigs equals more profit. Neither of those things work. You've got to integrate the two and make the two work together. And so you need to come up, what, what, um, what we find in this data set is that you need to come up with a pigs per sow per year kind of a goal for, for your farm. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, let me go back. What I'm talking about here, the effects of pigs per sow per year on, um, this is uh, the green line, is cost of production. And we range, this is non-feed. So I'm taking out all the feed costs and just the non-feed cost of production. And it ranges from about um, 15, 10 to 15 cents a pound up to 40 cents a pound. Non-feed costs, not counting 15 bushels of corn and, uh, and however much soybean meal and, and premix you put in a, into a pig. The red line is pigs per sow per year. And, and as the non-feed cost goes up, as the non-feed cost goes up, the red line bounces. You know, we go from 15 pigs per sow per year, 6, 15, back down to, to 5, up and down, up and down, up and down. And I put a trend line, a trend line on pigs per sow per year, and again, that trend line is pretty flat across here. As cost of production on the non-feed side goes up, we tend to see a little bit of advantage with, with um, more pigs per sow per year. 11, it goes down to 9. But when we look at our database, the, the range in pigs per sow per year is not 11 to 9. It's 17, or it's, it's 14 to 7. You see what I'm saying? So, the, so pigs per sow per year, it has an effect on non-feed costs, but it's not dramatic. Here, here's the kicker. This slide really shows you, as you total up the total non-feed cost per sow, that's labor costs, that's building costs, that's, that's cost of operating, which includes interest and straw and repairs and supplies and, and um, principal payments, all those kind of things, F fixed cost. The range in cost per sow ranges from about $400 a sow up to $1,200 a sow. 
and I looked at this data, I split it out, and here's the first set of data in around the four, the, the three to four to five hundred dollars, the second set of data here, the third, I split out and looked at about seven hundred dollars cost per sow, and the third at about eight hundred to a thousand dollars cost per sow. And let's look at that first data set. And what we find on this, if we just set up this slide a bit, the red line, in order to get it on the slide, I used one-tenth of the cost per sow. And so a 35 would be $350 cost per sow, non-feed cost. The 450 would be $450 cost per sow, that 45. And this particular, the green dots here are um, dollars per pig, non-feed cost dollars per pig. The bottom, the, the horizontal axis, these are each an individual farm, and this is their actual pigs per sow per year. And so on this particular set of overhead, I'm sorry about that, we see um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight out of 13 under $50 per pig. And the rest of them, are under $70, $65 per pig. So everybody in this particular group, no matter what the, the pigs per sow per year is down here, is, um, is under 65. And we've got one particular farm that has about a $400 cost per sow and, and raised 17 pigs per sow per year with a $400 per sow overhead cost for labor, buildings, operating costs, everything. The next set, Going the wrong way. The next set would be the um, five to seven hundred dollar cost per sow. Here would be the five hundred. Here would be the seven hundred. And remember, everybody was under sixty-five. Um, on this one, only about a third of them are under sixty-five, and two-thirds of the numbers are over sixty-five dollars a pig. And we, and what we find in this particular group, we find some pretty good. Pigs per sow per year here, there's a 13, and we get a $55 per pig non-feed cost, but we're finding some $80 per pig cost. So when we're giving up $30 a pig in non-feed cost, um, all of a sudden that skews these numbers to higher cost operations. And it's a matter of the, the overhead of the operation, they're not getting enough pigs to cover the cost of, of the labor facilities, operating costs, the, the pickups and the, and the grinders and tractors. These particular operations and where pigs per sow per year comes in is as you increase your, your costs of non-feed, you have to increase, you have to increase your performance. And so these, these, these particular numbers have to be, instead of eight and 10, they have to be 10, and 12. You need a couple more pigs. Or the nice thing about a lot of these niche herds is that they could run, they're actually short of pigs is the problem. They, they, need, they need to sell 500 pigs and they're only selling 400 and their cost structure is for 500 and so they're 20% short on pigs and everything, every non-feed expense goes up 20%. So in order to, to lower the cost, these have two options. You either get better performance or if we add breeding females and lower this cost from $500 a sow down to $350 a sow, what happens is that you could put yourself into this graph with the same performance. Just raise your output. See, it's the 500 pigs per farm that's important. How you get there isn't quite as important. Let's look at the, um, the last graph here, the, the higher non-feed cost per sow section. And in this one, we do see, here, see here's the ones that are 10 to 12 pigs per sow per year. And in fact, under this cost structure, we need you know, 12 to 14 to 15 pigs per sow per year to make this, these kinds of operations work or you need more sows because these operations need a thousand pigs sold and they're only selling 800. They're 20% short, which increases all the cost 20% on the whole farm. 
And so you don't see, if I say you needed, you need to keep your non-feed costs at $50 a head or below in order to be competitive, which would be about 20 cents a pound, roughly. You can't spend any more than 20 cents a pound on non-feed cost. Under this cost structure, you've only got one herd out of the 13 that does that. And it needed to have 14 pigs per sow per year to do it on a $700 a sow overhead cost. Everybody else is in the 80 to 100 range on pigs cost per, on co non-feed cost per pig. And so that kind of gives you the, 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 one of the biggest profit drivers, one of the most important things is what I call a target production level. And it's got to match your cost structure. It's got to meet or exceed. And, and so what you do is you take up what's, what do I need for labor, what's the building costs, the operating costs, the, 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 um, what's it cost me for my equipment, and I divide that by 50. And that tells me my target operation output. And I have to. It's, it's number one on financial management of these herds. I have to meet that target. And if I do it with, with 10 pigs per sow per year, it's better to do it with 15 pigs per sow per year. But if I can only get 12 pigs per sow per year out of my system, then I better add some sows because I got to meet the 500 pigs, you see, or whatever that number is for your operation. I've got to keep my production in line with my costs. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So we're looking, we're really looking you know, most of these niche, niche systems get a $15 premium. And that's, remember, I talked about margin. That's on the income side. You need that $15. But I'm saying when we're looking at the production cost side, if I take the difference between these 15 farms and those 15 farms, that's 15 cents, 100 weight times a 270-pound pig, it's $40 on the cost side. So we're, we're looking for $15 on the, on the marketing side. We're looking for $40 ahead on the cost side to keep, if, you, if we're keeping things in, row, in, in line on the management. And so what I, what I did was find, I find from here, I found the top eight profit drivers for small herds. And they're, they're, they're somewhat true even in commodity herds, although nobody really meshes. There's not very many people that mesh production and financials together, except the very big ones are starting to. They're figuring this out. Because I've been to some, some um, Smithfield talks where their accountant talks, and they're finally figuring this out. You've got to mesh production and financial together. Just having a performance monitor to sows is not enough. And just having an accountant do your numbers is not enough. The two got to mesh. So we're looking for $40 on the, on the cost side. And when we're looking, the nice, the nice thing about this slide points out is that 96% of that difference, that $41 we're looking for, is, can be found in um, things that you have control over, the things you spend money for in your operation, the day-to-day -day things. 96% of that can be found there. And so here's, here's the, the eight, actually I put nine in there just, just, to, just because um, we, we always blame, you know, herd health and death loss. It's ter it's, it, you know, we can't use antibiotics, and so that's what sorts people by profit. That's number nine. It's way down there, <laughs> way down toward the bottom. The surprising thing is, is, an, is when I sort, there's 100 different outputs. You sort by profit, you find $17, right? That's um, $17, or, well, 17 versus 2, $15 difference. That's the $41 we're looking at at the top. When I sorted by production cost, <laughs> I found another $7 a hundredweight difference. How'd that happen? Well, our low-cost producers get less money because they don't farrow in expensive wintertime or the expensive summertime. And so they spare, the low-cost producers tend to farrow a few more pigs spring and fall, and so they end up getting a lower price <laughs> in the fall, you know, typically. And, and, you know, that's part of it, but I, other than that, I can't explain it 
Um, but but um, there's there's if you're looking at production costs, that forty dollars is really about fifty five to to sixty difference in production cost between 15 of the high cost herds and 15 of the low cost herds per pig I'm talking about. So then I went through the rest of those outputs and all 100 of them and number one ranking when I sorted by, by labor efficiency. <laughs> number one. That's the number one sorter. Above pigs per sow per year, above death loss, above health, above everything else. It's labor efficiency. And we can explain about $12 a hundredweight difference in cost. Remember, we had $15 a hundredweight difference in total profit. We can explain almost three quarters of that in labor efficiency. When I sorted by operating cost, What's involved in operating cost? It's some um, heating, heat lamps, broken boards, fences, <laughs> supplies, repairs, water, um, utilities, phone bills, trucking, bedding. Huge on this, huge differences. Number two profit sorter was operating cost. Not that surprising huge differences in operating costs. Number three was feed efficiency. About eight, and eight nine cents a hundred weight difference. When I sort by feed efficiency, um, the, the, the difference in feed efficiency alone was about eight dollars, eight, eight, nine dollars a hundred weight. And then finally I get to a, a performance number. Number four, pigs per litter was ranked number four. Um, Price of feed was number five. And then another performance, your other performance was number six. They're important, but they rank four and six, not one and two. Um, the price received for animals was number seven, and then fixed cost was number eight, and death loss was num number nine, as I sorted down through those numbers. So, so again, it's, it's some operations have have their um, output, you know, right here, its output is, is out of balance with inputs. Inputs are too high relative to the number of pigs sold. And that's why I say that that target number is very, very important on a, on a niche herd, that target out the door. You know, and, and the thing that we've gotten used to is most commodity herds use pigs per sow per year on a fixed sow herd that's the same as a target number out the door if you got a fixed number of sows. More pigs per sow per year equals more pigs. On these herds, we don't really have a fixed sow number. We can fluctuate the sow number from, from year to year, from, from farrowing to farrowing. This num th this, these herds, are, it's got to be a pig sold number we got to start talking about. That's our goal. That's, that's really what, what drives the, the profit differences. All right, now I'm going to go through at least the top, the top few. Let's look at the number one. And we see labor efficiencies here from a half an hour to produce 100 pounds of pigs to over two hours to produce 100 pounds of pigs. And we're, we're valuing that labor at $15 an hour. And so two hours is worth 30 bucks a pig. In fact, if I do the math, um, well, I didn't do the math on this one, but um, when I'm going on these farms, and I was personally on, this is a group effort, um, Dr. Jim Clevestein's here, and he helps, he's helping with the paper, writing the paper and doing the statistics on this, and um, there's four or five other co-workers that collected, helped collect these numbers on farms, and I, I was personally on about 20 of these farms out of 40, and the things that I see is huge differences in, first of all, worker productivity, how much you can get done in a day. But aside from that, the daily chores, there's people that are letting sows in and out, there's people hand feeding everything, all the, and they're even hand bedding and hand, and hand cleaning all the way up to a payloader, <laughs> you know, to clean. A, to, to, to clean. And there's, so there's tremendous differences in the day-to-day, -day, how long it takes to do chores, um, the, some of these have off-site for health reasons, and, and if you're driving, 
You know, if you're driving 20 miles to, or 10 miles to check pigs, and there's just a few pigs, you know, and all of a sudden uh, the system itself might be spread out too much and not handy enough for people to make, to do um, efficient labor. There's frequent moving of pigs in some, some operations. The, the processing of pigs uh, is a big deal when you don't have a crate. And how you figure out how to process baby pigs can take you a lot of time. There's some people have to gather up all the pigs and carry them to a place away from the sows, process them, and bring them back. And there's other people who have figured out how to process a pig while the, while the sows away from the pigs. But figuring that stuff out makes a difference in how you utilize your labor and how many pigs you get out the door relative to hours spent. When we're going back to a solid manure handling system, because these have to be bedded systems, I mean all of a sudden it's not the 10,000 gallon um, you know, manure spreader. It, it, you know, some of these guys have small two tons, two ton spreaders with a little bitty loader and it takes forever to do, handle dry manure versus, versus the equipment that you probably need or hired to, to come in to spread manure efficiently in these systems. So that really has to be worked on as far as labor efficiency. The facility set up, I remember the National Pork Board had a, um, had a trial and they had some pens and, and in, that they were found in hoop barns a couple years ago. Anybody remember that trial they did? But the, the gates were heavy and they had to set the pens up every time. And, then, and the word was, that, I mean, they had to spend, uh, two guys had to spend a whole day setting up um, 20, I don't know what it was, 20 fairing, fairing pens. And um, there's some of these operations that have their farrowing pens set up all the time. You know, you just run the sow in, sort of a thing. And so, you know, differences in how long it takes you to set up, tear down, uh, uh, can affect your labor efficiencies I've seen on the farms. There's a tremendous, these, these, these farms are scattered over five states, and all the pigs tend to go to Supreme. Um, and so the distance to market the sort time, the size of the load, if they're really small herds and you have to haul five pigs at a time, it just takes a half a day, you know, to haul five pigs versus a half a day to haul a semi load. The labor efficiency is there is really, really huge. Feed systems on the farm, some people are grinding their own feed, some people have them delivered. It's a huge time difference in those kind those two systems. Um, both of those costs are in there, but the time differences you know, would be on a different line as far as cost of production. So, so if they're grinding their own feed, it's going to take them longer and it's going to impact the labor efficiencies. And that's a, that's a decision you have to trade off with um, feed cost. And then the single operator, there needs to be a, a pretty broad knowledge of everything. You've got to be a handling expert. You've got to be a nutrition person, you know, really know something about nutrition, something about genetics, and, and to keep up on all that stuff takes, a, takes, takes some time, and I don't begrudge that for taking time, but there's differences in how fast people learn. So those are just my quick list of some of the things I see, why we see that big variation. Um, there's so many different ways to do it. And, uh, and one of the things that niche people have to do, niche production has to do, is, is examine, examine how they're doing it, make sure it's competitive. Make sure the way we're doing it is competitive. The second, the second ranking one was operating cost, and on operating cost, we, we ran from um, two, two to four cents a pound, all the way up to 14 cents a pound, just for, just for turning the lights on, basically. Lights, supplies, bedding, um, fencing, that sort of thing, water. And so when I, I did the math on this one, and when we're talking about $41, when I sorted by profit, we're talking about $24 difference per pig in operating cost. So if we just want to focus on just one little thing, we say operating cost is, is, is 50 percent more important than market price. Because <laughs> when I, you know, we're getting $15 premium. But when, I, when there's a $24 ahead difference in operating cost, I think people need to focus on minimizing operating costs before they worry about the price they're getting for the pig. Because operating costs are more important than price, so is labor efficiency. 
so when we look at this, and we, and I've been on those 21 farms, and I'm looking at things that I see that impact operating costs. Of course, number one on the list is that target. I mean, it, to turn the lights on, whether you have one pen and one pig in the pen or 100 pigs in the pen, the light bulb costs the same. <laughs> or the fencing, or or the you know the water would go up, vet bill would go up a little bit. But, but basically, number one on lowering operating costs is making sure the throughput, the number of pigs you sold, are enough to cover your operating costs. And you get this mostly, because this is why the really small, the, the kind of the hobby farms, why they get out of kilter. Because they've got 20 sows, so you're selling what, 100, 150 pigs, <laughs> 200 pigs, 250 pigs. And they've got enough cost structure for 500 pigs. You know, it's really easy to get that out of line on a really small herd because you, you buy in, you buy a grinder. <laughs> you can't afford a grinder with, you know what I'm saying? They buy a grinder and it's all of a sudden their operating cost just to operate that grinder for 20, for 250 pigs is just, oof, it's just all out of sight. Or pickup. You know, and they say, okay, I need the pickup for the pigs. And I only have 250 pigs. So how do you how do you stretch out a twenty thousand dollar pickup over 250 pigs? It doesn't work, <laughs> you know. And so the cost structure's got to be in line with the production, and that's number one. And um, some of these people are pasture. I mean, there's there's probably out of the 40 farms, there's probably six or eight of them that are pasture farrowers, and operating costs on a pasture is um, pretty low. I mean, you need some fencing, um, <laughs> the, and you need to pump some water, but there's no electricity, you know, sort of a thing. And so there's some systems that are set up that basically harvest pig systems, and, you, and your inputs are really, really low in some of these systems. Bedding cost, you're paying, you're paying well, back then it was $2 a bale for straw, you know, 40, you know, 4 cents a pound for straw versus corn stocks, you know, and you can buy 2000 <laughs> 2,000 pounds for $15 back then. You know what I'm saying? So the bedding cost is, is, can separate operating cost. Some people were um, trying to rent facilities and paying too much for old facilities. Some people were feed processing. Um, feed processing costs would go back into operating cost if they're hiring it done, and that could raise your operating cost. Of course, the health bills. On um, products, both products and services, there's there's some things out that people, you know, pigs get sick, and they try these things, and, and in a niche herd, some of these products are very expensive, and some of them work sometimes, <laughs> you know, and, and if they don't work, you don't get more pigs, you sure certainly can't afford to spend a lot of money on these health products to try to get more pigs when they really, really don't... Um, if they're not paying you back, it just doesn't work. Supplies, repairs, and machine hire, those are, those are things that, that like, I, like I said before, that goes along with the throughput issue. Those are things that can get out of line. So you gotta know on your operation how much, you gotta kind of have a budget. This is how much I can spend on operating costs. This is how much I can spend on a pickup to drive back and forth to chores and those sort of things. And so you gotta kind of have a budget and then, um, there was one, one example, um, we had, uh, what was it, like two gallons of gas per pig. <laughs> when we totaled up this gasoline he used, two gallons per pig, and it was multi-site, and it was just a few pigs here and a few pigs there, and he was using a, a, you know, a pickup, and the pickup, I'm pretty sure it got miles to the gallon, but not very many miles to the gallon, you know, as he's driving from, from site to site, and pretty soon, uh, you drove a lot of gas through that old pickup and didn't realize he's got not very many pigs to show for the gas you put in the pickup. So those sort of things kind of sneak up on you. If you're not keeping decent records, they can, they can get you. And it's pretty important. Third on the list was feed efficiency. We ran from a three to a five, somewhere in the middle fives on feed efficiency. When we're talking about feed efficiency, we're talking about um, sow feed, boar feed, everything divided by total pounds of weight gain. So the sow weight gains included in there, you know, the baby pig weight gain, all the fed to finish weight gain. Every weight gain's included and all the feeds included. So it's whole herd feed efficiency is what I'm saying. 
And we had 15 farms that were a 3.4, 15 farms that were a 4.8. That amounted to another $24 a head. So feed efficiency is number three. And when we're talking about feed efficiency, I think we've been pounding that with $5 corn now. Feed efficiency just became two and a half times more important than it was in 06. And so my number one is no longer number one for 07. Number one is right here now, today, feed efficiency, by far. And these are the things that I see. I mean, there, there's um, when, you're, when you're doing raising outside pigs, they have to have outside access, so a lot of the feeders are outside. When you have outside feeders, the old big round feeders, they are tough to adjust. When it rains, when it's cold like this, the saliva freezes on the metal and so you know you cut them down too much and uh, they, they freeze up and, and you open them up and then the trough's full um, but uh, <laughs> with five dollar corn I, you can make any excuse you want you got to do it <laughs> you got to adjust those feeders down basically minimize the wastage and you got to spend it's it's a hundred dollar an hour now it's at least a hundred dollars it's possibly two hundred dollars an hour to work at those feeders if, especially if they're in niche and you know, with this kind of corn prices. Um, one, of the, one of the things I typically see is fat sows. Um, niche producers um, feel sorry for their sows, overfeed them in gestation. So there's a lot of feed wasted in, those, in gestation. Um, because they're small, overweight pigs are a problem. There's a lot of pigs, even fat pigs, we're trying to get them at 50% lean, and there's a lot of pigs slip through that are too big. And big pigs are really bad for feed efficiency, um, especially in this system. And that's partly because of the large weight, the, the large weight variation we find sometimes as, sow, as a sow group spreads out. Uh, another problem with feed efficiency as well as cost of feed is that, is that we don't group our sows quite, the, you know, that'd be one more big, big, big goal is to bunch the sows in the farrowing and try to get that um, weight distribution fixed, not only for feed costs, so feed the right ration to the right size pig, but also so that when you're marketing, you don't have these big pigs along with the little pigs on, on um, not only the dock on the market, but the feed efficiency effect. Low pigs per sow per year are going to be more important in 2008 than it was in 2006 by probably, that's going to go up a lot because no longer can we afford to feed um, with, with feed at 10 cents a pound and we're feeding five pounds, if we're feeding five pounds to a sow, you, you know, and they're gaining a pound, maybe they're, maybe they're gain, getting a six to one conversion, but with four cent sows <laughs> and 10 cent feed, I mean, it doesn't work. Back, back in 06, when feed was four cents a pound, four to five cents a pound, and you're feeding five pounds, you feed a sow for a quarter, and she gained a pound, and she's worth, that pound was worth 40 cents. So feeding sows was a push, basically. You're out your labor, you're out your bedding, but you could feed a sow, and, and the, the feed would be paid for by her weight gain if she wasn't pregnant. Today, it doesn't work, you know, with today's economics. But um, typically, typically on these herds, you can almost feed a sow for her weight gain. Her weight gain pays for the feed if she's open. She gains weight. And, if, and the conversion on a gilt is about four and a half to one. So you take your feed price times four and a half. That'd be your, that, that would be your cost of gain, you, you see. So you, if you take your feed price at five cents times four to one conversion, her cost of gain was about 25, 30 cents. And on a sow market at 40 cents, I mean, uh, the, the cost of gain on a sow, she's, she's not losing you money, but she's not making you any money. And so that's why on the niche herds that we don't see pigs per sow per year, at least in 06, is a huge profit um, sorter because it's output that determines profit. It's not productivity necessarily in these herds because we can, we used to be able to feed a sow with cheap corn and, and, and decent cold sow prices. We could hold our money together feeding sows. It wasn't, it wasn't the best thing to do <laughs> and it takes up space, but, but at least you're not losing money then. Now, this, this coming year, if you don't have pigs on the sow, um, low pigs per sow per year, it's, it's, it, you've got, a, the, instead of $150 invested in feed, you've got 300 
dollars invested in feed on a sow, and a sow this coming year is going to be worth about fifteen dollars. Right now, today, she's worth about fifteen dollars. You got three hundred invested in feed. It's really important this year that you um, get those sows bred, and it's doubly important on a niche herd that the, the, that the litter average has to come up because we're feeding these sows over over they start eating 25 30 pounds a day and we're feeding them 45 40 days 30 30 pounds a day over 40 days is 1200 pounds of feed that's an investment today and 1200 pounds of feed is worth about 150 bucks and so if you're only if you're only raising six pigs <laughs> you know you do the math it's about that, that's about thirty dollars a pig versus eight pigs, we can at least cut that feed cost down by 25% now with, with bigger litters. And so one of the strategies for higher feed cost years would be to make sure you cross foster and make sure that every sow is milking at least eight pigs. And those that aren't milking enough pigs, they need to be culled even during lactation, I would, you know, if you can do it, if it, if it works out with the size of the pig and that sort of thing. Misestimation of the weights, you feed the wrong diet to the wrong size pig. We can't feed antibiotic in the system, and that's some proven. On a nursery pig, we're losing about 7% feed efficiency, and on a finisher pig, about 2% feed efficiency on the average by not feeding antibiotics. But the antibiotics themselves cost something, so normally that's not a real big expense. But as feed prices go up, if antibiotics don't go up with it, it's going to be a detriment to... Um, niche hogs. Poor environment, stresses, um, poor buildings, we get tail biting can in fact feed efficiency, the health status of course, uh, a young pig disease setback. Some of these herds are not using F1s, they're using a three-way cross and so heterosis might improve some of these herds on feed efficiency. We're, we're targeting a fatter pig on some of these herds and the feed efficiency is of course poorer on those fatter lines of genetics. And then um, when we use a less effective antibiotic substitute, all these things impact um, feed efficiency. Number four on the list was price of feed. And um, this is an interesting slide I put together. Here is the, the price of feed. Five would be $100 a ton. Six would be $120 a ton, six cents a pound. Seven cents a pound would be $140 a ton. Eight cents a pound would be $160 a ton, and the last farm went off the chart. And this is what they paid for feed in price per ton. Now remember, everything's standardized. Corn price is standardized. So 1,600 pounds out of every ton is standard price. So we're talking about the 400 pounds that are left, the soybean meal, vitamins, minerals, and additives that you put in impacting the um, feed, there's feed efficiency, let's see, back this way, impacting the, the feed efficiency. You would think as you paid more for feed that your feed efficiency would improve. If I did a trend line, this is feed efficiency on the yellow bars, I did a trend line across what people paid for feed it was unrelated in this data set to the feed efficiencies. The trend line's flat. There are people that paid very little for feed and got tremendous feed efficiencies. There's people that paid a, a lot for feed and got very poor feed efficiencies. Feed efficiency is a management number that goes to the factors I talked about on the previous slide. I did, <laughs> you know, I didn't talk. I didn't talk about differences in feed on the previous slide on feed efficiency. And that's because when in this particular data set, what they paid for feed had no difference, made no difference in, um, in the feed efficiency. The price of feed itself ranged here from $100 a ton up to about $200 a ton. And when you just take the price of feed, there's 15 farms that paid $143. Love to see those days again, huh? And 15 farms that paid $110. The difference in just the price at the average feed efficiency was about $19 a pig. So the financial management of, of, of figuring, out your, figuring out something about your um, swine rations 
about what they cost, how to put together a nutritious ration that meets the, nutri the nutritional needs of your pig at the lowest cost and keeps them growing is worth $19 a pig to you on this, this system versus, remember, the premiums of 15 And so we're still way more important on the cost side here on price of feed than, than, um, than premium is. Looking at this, you'd say, okay, here we, here we see the high, higher price feed got a um, 429 and the lower price feed was a 431 feed efficiencies when I sorted 15 farms versus 15 farms. So there was absolutely no difference in the feed efficiency itself. What's interesting is that um, these 15 farms fed more um, supplement, more protein than these, got the same efficiencies. So if we're, if we're going for a fatter pig and we're overfeeding protein, because most, most of the nutritionists will set you up for highly engaged pigs, well, you take away the antibiotics and your pigs are going to grow a little slower. You take away con environmentally controlled buildings, your pigs are going to grow a little slower. Um, they get a little health challenge, the pigs are going to slow down a little bit. And so these pigs tend to spread out too because of the lack of antibiotics. And so if we're feeding a high, high lean gain feed, um, to a medium or even a low lean gain pig, that pig has to take all that soybean meal and convert it over to energy. And that takes, that not only costs you more, but it, it takes energy to do that. And so that's why um, the, we find the feed efficiency is about the same because they basically, for that genetics, for it's herd specific. You gotta you gotta have a nutritionist that's gonna work with you, and, and in niche production, you gotta have a nutritionist that understands that you're not maximizing lean gain. That's not your goal. Your goal is to maximize good tasting meat <laughs> at the end, and rate of gain might not be your number one priority because a lot of these operations have plenty of room to finish out pigs. That's not rate of gain is not the number one priority. Um, Feed efficiency probably is more so. So the things that change um, when you're talking about feed price, it's first of all would be the, the basic cost of the ingredients. Some are over are priced with a higher markup than others. Some 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 businesses use a higher markup than others. But what we find is that a lot of the high priced feed come with with um, they're putting in a lot of additives, you know, a lot of times. And the additives may not be enough to pay. They might not get enough pork to pay for these additives, enough, enough extra performance. The intake, the high, the high lactation diet intake with too dense of a, too, too nutrient dense, we've got a wholly different animal. And a lot of nutritionists don't understand this either, is that if we're feeding for a commodity sow that's going to wean in 18 days, her peak intake is 10 to 12 pounds. And she's still on the up. When we're weaning the pig, she's still eating more feed every day. When we're weaning at 42 to 50 days, she's gone up and plateaued. And a lot of these sows, especially on the long lactations, they will eat 20 pounds a day on the average. Now, if you're balancing for lysine, it's a whole different ration. If you need 50, 50 grams of lysine, it's a whole different percentage if you're eating 10 pounds versus 20 pounds. In fact, you need twice as much, twice as nutrient dense ration feeding 10 pounds a day to 18 days as you would 20 pounds a day over 50 days. And so, so some of these, some of these, some of these things, you, we've done some workshops on nutrition, but, but to pay attention to that, make that work, it is big. I talked about feeding high lean protein to low lean pigs, misguessing the weight, so you're overfeeding, you may be feeding a ration that should be for a 40 pound pig and you're feeding 80 pound pigs. That happens. And then using high cost feed substitutes is, is another, is the other problem. Market price, I think that was down on the list of ways. When we sort by market price, we see a range from 50 down to 40, and a lot of that we talked about earlier might be seasonal. Some of it is just the different systems get a little bit different price. 
Um, the average cull sow breeding price was part of that market price difference. And we see pretty good range in cull sow breeding price as well. When I sort by market price, I have 15 farms that sold at 52 and 15 farms that sold at 45. So we're talking about $7 a hundredweight difference in market price, so we can't ignore market price differences. It's important but it didn't actually sort profit groups. So again, here at the end, if this um, kind of wrap up and then ask, answer any questions you might have, is these are the nine things that we kind of talked through. And I didn't mention um, our fixed cost, actually we talked through seven of them. You know, fixed cost, we've got some pasture operations versus um, versus some fairly uh, more intense uh, investments, you know, with hoops and things. Some fit more from some newer ones, and that's that's worth a nickel, you know, to kind of keep your to kind of keep that in line. But but you know, you add those all up, it's worth more than the pig. And so it's a system. It's a it's a farm by farm approach, and 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 it's you need to have your own numbers, and you need to have advantages someplace. If it's advantages in operating costs and facilities, maybe you can give up a little feed efficiency. If you've got an advantage in feed efficiency and operating costs, maybe you can give up a little bit of pigs per sow per year. Do you see what I'm saying? And it's a trade-off of these that work together in a whole system that, 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 that makes the ones that work, work. And the ones that don't, don't. And so, so interesting findings, I think, for, um, for, from this um, particular study.